Hello, my name is Bonnie and I'm a graduate student at Moss Landing Marine Labs located in Moss Landing, California. Today I'll be presenting my master's thesis research titled Geographic and Ontogenetic Variation in the Trophic Ecology of Lingcod along the U.S. West Coast. I'd like to start by setting the scene. The U.S. West Coast spans across four states, Alaska, Washington, Oregon, and California. There are several currents that these coastlines are exposed to. The California Current, for example, runs from Canada to Mexico, providing cool, productive, nutrient-rich waters during spring, summer, and early fall. These are favorable conditions for primary producers that are the base of the food web. In addition, this range encompasses a variety of habitat types and bathymetries for many different types of marine fauna. For example, the rocky reef habitat in both shallow and deep waters. This provides shelter for ground fishes, such as the rock fishes, which are a long-lived and slow-to-mature group that are highly valued in the recreational and commercial fisheries. Another important member in the ground fishes group along the U.S. West Coast are lingcod. Lingcod range from Kodiak Island, Alaska to Point San Carlos, Baja, California, Mexico. They are an ecologically important species as a common top marine predator in the rocky reef habitat along their range. Economically, they are valuable in the recreational and commercial fisheries. They are quick to mature and grow, unlike the rockfishes, and are sexually dimorphic, where the females attain larger sizes than males, and as they age and grow, they move to deeper depths. How is diet assessed? In brief, there are two common methods. The first idea that may come to mind is through gut content analysis. This method requires identifying and enumerating prey items found in the stomach, providing a snapshot of an organism's diet on the order of hours or days. Stable isotope analysis involves analyzing a tissue sample, and in this case, nitrogen to assess trophic levels and carbon to assess the sources of primary production. Stable isotope analysis provides a long-term or integrated understanding of diet on the order of weeks or months, aka you are what you eat. These complementary methods are useful in getting a well-rounded idea of an organism's diet. There have been several small-scale diet studies on lingcod and evidence of temporal, spatial, and ontogenetic differences in lingcod diet. Overall, lingcod consume a wide variety of prey items. In Washington, Pacific sandlands were the most numerically common, 23% by number, but approximately 50% of the biomass was composed of rocky reef bottom fishes, such as sculpins, greenlings, and rockfishes. In Oregon, pelagic fishes such as the Pacific herring comprised 46% of the diet by number, whereas in California the diet was influenced by rockfishes and octopuses. To the best of my knowledge, there have been no stable isotope studies on lingcod that assess the trophic level feeding ecology. With the differences demonstrated in previous diet studies, I was curious if there were other factors attributing to these differences in diet besides location, such as sex, length, or environmental factors. My objectives for my research, then, were to use gut content and stable isotope analysis to 1. assess geographic differences in lingcod diet, 2. Identify and compare male and female lingcod feeding habits. 3. Compare lingcod feeding habits based on lingcod length. And 4. Identify ecological and environmental factors that may influence lingcod feeding habits. Sampling took place primarily during the summer of 2016 in Alaska in 2017. While we attempted to limit seasonal variation for the bulk of our samples, some consideration must be taken into account during comparisons particularly Alaska, which was sampled in May 2017. We fished out of 19 ports along the U.S. West Coast, which are grouped into six regions that are part of the Pacific Coast Groundfish Fishery Management Plan, Alaska, Vancouver, Columbia, Eureka, Monterey, and Conception. We used hook and line fishing gear and fished from chartered party boats, spending over 35 days at sea. The goal was 100 ling cod per port. A fun anecdote is that we rented an RV attached to trailer and drove from Washington to California in order to sample quickly and move port to port with all of our gear. This was a collaborative effort, so we had the expertise and advice of local captains, crew, resource agencies, and academic institutions. We also had the help from over 300 amazing volunteer anglers. 
While fishing on the boat, we obtained a suite of information, such as location, depth, bottom relief, and drift times. We also collected a variety of link cod, both small and large, female and male, and from both shallow and deep waters. During dissections, we removed each stomach and placed the gut contents into an individual jar and preserved in ethanol to process when we got back to the labs. While processing each stomach, all items were enumerated and weighed, and prey items were identified to the lowest possible taxonomic level, although it varied greatly based on the level of digestion. I calculated several standard dietary metrics and their percentages of abundance by number and weight, prey-specific abundance by number and weight, frequency of occurrence, and prey-specific index of relative importance. For the stable isotope analysis, I collected a piece of white muscle tissue from the dorsal region of each fish and froze it. Back at lab, I freeze-dried and ground each sample, then shipped them off to be processed to ascertain the nitrogen and carbon values. We did sample across ice escapes, which is an important consideration for comparisons among regions. I used just shy of 2,000 link cod for this diet study, and about a third of these link cod had empty stomachs. In total, 1,258 link cod were used for gut content analysis. We often obtained entire intact squids or just remaining cephalopod beaks, decently intact and sized rockfish, or in this case, 73 young of the year rockfish in the stomach of one binge eating link cod and more rare samples like sandpaper skate egg cases, or tiny mysterious clues, which, with some detective work, realized that it had come from an, a lamprey mouth. Of the 1,258 stomachs, 61 types of prey items were sorted into eight prey groups. On this table, the prey groups are listed on the left, and their percent prey-specific index of relative importance is listed by region. PSIRI is a valuable metric in that it uses a combination of prey-specific abundance by number, prey-specific abundance by weight, and frequency of occurrence to indicate the most important prey items. I'd like to note that the unidentified teleos prey group was for occurrences where there were only miscellaneous fish bones and essentially fish mush. However, this group was overwhelmingly important across all regions. Together, unidentified teleos, Cephalopods and scorpionids comprise just shy of 84% PSIRI across all regions. I used a permanova to better understand which factors best explain the variability in link cod diet. I used both abundance by number and by weight to create individual models, but they were nearly identical, so I'm choosing to only present using number here. The first model I created included the unknown teleos prey group and included that Depth, region, sex, and the interaction between depth and region were significant factors in explaining variability in link cod gut contents. As previously described, the unknown teleos prey group is important in the bigger picture, but it is also vague and created a lot of noise. When I removed the unidentified teleos prey group, I created a stronger model with those same factors. First, I want to highlight here the differences in diet by depth. Lean cod were grouped into depth bins to create a visual aid and to better understand how diet changes by lean cod collected in shallow, moderate, and deep depth bins listed on the x-axis, respectively. The most important prey groups by abundance by number contributing to that depth bin is above each bar, where cephalopods were the most important prey group for the shallow and moderate depth bins, and the gadids were the most important prey group for the deep depth bin. Scorpionids were the second most important prey group in each. Next, I'll demonstrate differences in diet by region. This is a plot of my outputs for my principal component analysis. Each prey group is indicated by their associated vectors, and the boxes represent the average values for each region with plus or minus one standard error. Lean cod diets in the Vancouver region were dominated by gadids and semi-pelagic fishes, whereas lean cod diets in the Conception, Monterey, and Eureka regions were dominated by cephalopods. This is a visual representation of what female and male lean cod consumed by percent number on the top and percent weight on the bottom. Most notably, male lean cod ate over twice the amount of cephalopods compared to female lean cod by both abundance by number and weight. In comparison, female lean cod ate eight times the abundance by number and six times the abundance by weight of gadids compared to male lean cod. 
Overall, female lingcod ate over two times the total amount in weight of prey compared to male lingcod. An important reminder that female lingcod are typically larger than male lingcod, and as noted on the previous slide, the females ate more gadids, which is a much larger type of prey. Shifting gears now to the stable isotope analysis, we used 519 samples for this part of the study. This is a biplot that demonstrates the relationship between mean values of nitrogen and carbon stable isotopes by region. Most notably, we see that the Alaska region separated from the rest of the other regions and the conception region to an extent as well, while the middle four regions clustered together. I use GLMs to assess differences in how these factors affect carbon and nitrogen stable isotope values. For carbon, only region was significant. However, depth, sex, length, and region were all significant factors that explain variability in nitrogen. These are box plots of the regional stable isotope values with carbon on the left and nitrogen on the right. The more negative carbon values represent more pelagic influences and the less negative carbon values represent more benthic influences. Alaska and Conception were more heavily influenced by more pelagic carbon sources while the middle four regions were not. Higher nitrogen values represent higher trophic level prey items and it is demonstrated here that overall the nitrogen stable isotope values increased as you go south. These two scatter plots demonstrate differences in nitrogen by depth on the left and length on the right. Overall there was a positive trend across all regions, indicating that larger lingcod caught at deeper depths eat higher trophic level prey items. Here we have a line graph with nitrogen stable isotope values on the y-axis and region on the x-axis. I found that on average, female lingcod have consistently higher nitrogen than males across all regions. These data indicate that female lingcod eat higher trophic level prey compared to male lingcod. To summarize, using both gut content analysis and stable isotope analysis, I demonstrated that lingcod diet is significantly different by location in this study by region, that lingcod diet is significantly different between female and male lingcod, that length of lingcod significantly influences diet in the stable isotope analysis, but not gut content analysis when other factors are considered, and that environmental factors such as depth significantly influence lingcod diet. In closing, lingcod consume a wide variety of prey items along their range. They primarily eat fishes, but cephalopods, mostly octopuses, are also an important prey group. There are some similarities in my study compared to previous studies. For example, the high influence of octopuses in California. However, in the Oregon study, lingcod consumed a large amount of Pacific herring, whereas that's what I found in Washington. This supports that they are both generalists and opportunists, feeding on schools of fish that may opportunistically pass by. Important variables in determining lingcod diet include depth, region, sex, and length. This study, conducted across the majority of the lingcod's range, filled in another piece of the puzzle needed for the implementation of ecosystem-based fisheries management. I'd like to acknowledge the many groups of people that helped with this research, as well as the several funding sources that I've received. Most recently, COAST for providing funding to participate in this conference. And of course, another huge thank you to the collaboration of all the volunteer anglers, captains, and crew. Feel free to email me if you have any questions or if you'd like to discuss my research in more detail. Thank you.